Welcome to the ED Clinics podcast. My name is James Woolidge and I'll be your host for this series where we'll be discussing everything to do with shockwave therapy and men's health conditions. That's everything from erectile dysfunction through to chronic pelvic pain syndrome, Peroni's disease, hard flaccid syndrome, amongst others. We'll be talking to a host of experts from around the world to shed some light on these complex conditions. And we'll also be talking to patients that have been through treatment journeys themselves so you can get a greater understanding of how we can help a broad range of people with these conditions. So without further ado, enjoy this episode. John. Ah, there we go. Hello, John. Did we do our first chat when we did we do it on a Zoom? Did I chat to you first on a Zoom? We had um we had a telephone conversation initially. So we have as per the sign now, which I think you're aware of. I think you came to see us through ED Clinics, didn't you, John? Through the website initially, ED Clinics, and then you came to us as one of the, the sort of regional centres, so to speak. Yes, I did um yes, I did some searching around online. I initially spent a bit of time reading about ED clinics and um, sp- specifically shockwave therapy. When you when you mention the word shock wave, <clears throat> um, it can feel a bit shocking. <laughs> um, sort of sorry for the pun, but um, yeah. I think um, I, I'm somebody who is naturally um, quite cautious. You know, when I'm entering into a relationship with any professional person. Mm. So I did. Um, I did a fair amount of research on shockwave therapy, and um, that signposted me to you guys. And that's when I picked up the phone and I spoke with Tom initially. Right. Uh, and then I came into the clinic and I had an initial consultation with you. I think at the time. Yeah, that must have been the case. Yeah. This was yeah. Just, just at the end of last year, and this this was just purely for for for, for ED, wasn't it? Yes, specifically. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so for people that the idea behind what we're, we're trying to achieve with the podcast is for people to understand the sort of there's a sort of pathway of, like you just said, you know, people doing investigations and so forth and then coming <clears> to us. So then how how do you felt that went in terms of November and then forwards on from that? Just talk us through how how that process worked for you. Well, I was um, I was in a state of anxiety. Um, i would kind of tussled with this problem for three or four years. I tried all the kind of usual stuff, you know, medication and um, talking therapies and God knows what else. No, you know, so all of which had some beneficial effect, but quite frankly, you know, it, it still left me in a place of anxiety. And of course, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. If you're anxious, then you get anxious, and if you if you've got anxiety, it makes erectile function more difficult <clears throat> in the moment. Now, fortunately, I had a very sympathetic and understanding partner at the time. And I shared with her that I was facing this particular problem. We've been able to sort of develop a very open and discussive discussive kind of relationship. So we we chatted about it and I said that, you know, I've been um, looking at stuff online and it was my intention to go and reach out and get some help. Uh, And she was very supportive about that and um, even offered to come with me. And I said, that wasn't necessary. I'm I'm quite happy to explore this on my own. And that's where really the, um, that's where, where the therapeutic process started. And that 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 was obviously yeah me back in November and then seeing Tom wasn't it and Tom you <clears throat> obviously did you start the treatment when was that? Uh, yeah, about December time I think or just into the new year. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we had uh, Tom. We had our first session. The thing I love about what Tom does is um, he he has a very kind of matter of fact way of being able to deal with this stuff, almost as if you're going to chat about Tom about getting your electric drill fixed or something you know <clears throat> it's not um it's just not an issue and um tom you've you got a great way of sort of putting people at ease you know um uh, because you are so matter of fact about it it's as if you know your stuff you're doing day in day out which i which i guess you are i think that's really important because i mean i'm 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 quite liberal and i'm quite open-minded and i'm very very willing and prepared to talk about this stuff but i'm also very conscious that there's lots of guys out there who live in their own bubble and they won't share or talk about these things so to have somebody that you can go to where it's just a like a chat you're having with somebody in the pub is the most fantastic thing do you think that's an important part of the first session is having that time to spend to sort of you know talk about work and get to know each other a bit and make it and sort of depersonalize the process a little bit yeah absolutely and i think um you know these these i think this is this is a very sensitive area for a lot of guys and i think a working relationship with professional people is such an such a, an important and valuable thing. And I think 
that can only happen if people are take people are willing to take time to get to know you and to get to understand and to get to empathize so that process really started as early as on uh, earlier on as coming to see you james and then you chatting about anything but ed um and that was really just good for getting me into a, you know a kind of a place where i felt comfortable to kind of share stuff with you really yeah i think i mean from that perspective it's been you know we've been doing this now three odd years and the the, 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 the the i think probably the most common feedback we get rather like you just said is that sense of you know it's a it's a massive hurdle to cross and when they come here you know and it was a, it was a bit of a learning learning curve for all of us actually not just in this clinic but in the other the other clinics that we we are ed clinics so to speak it's uh, it's new to us but actually what most guys want to do when they've been holding on to that the these <clears> issues for ages is just to have a sort of platform by which they can talk about things um and that you know that that's 90 percent of the first consultation is just listening when they often have been through a journey of you know, you saw, lots of people we've seen have been to the urologists, haven't they? And they've been through tested this, tested that, had blood test this, blood test. But they, they always pretty much say, you know, we've not had an opportunity to really just this is how this is how it is. This is how my relationship is with my partner. This is how it's affecting my anxiety levels and so forth. They just they don't they don't have the opportunity to discuss it, do they? Yeah, um, I think other other appointments tend to be quite the consultants' appointments maybe are a bit bit more rushed and. Yeah, they don't feel like people don't feel like they can open up quite as much but like from like you said it's good to have that initial time just to kind of ease into the process a little bit and get get to know the people that you're dealing with yes and that's it that's invaluable because um given the nature of this particular condition you know it kind of raises the question where do people go for help well i mean the the conventional routes are go and see your gp well they're under time pressure they don't get the luxury of spending quality time with people on this kind of issue and in any case, that normally results in them recommending, you know, Viagra or, <clears throat> or similar medication, you know, which, which for some people may well solve the problem. But I, I don't see that as I don't see that as getting to the root of the problem. I think that that's very much a panacea for um, masking the symptoms rather than getting to the root of it. So outside of seeing a GP, people often turn to the Internet and there's all kinds of bullshit on the Internet about you know how to overcome these problems including penis pumps and all sorts of ridiculous things you know <clears throat> which quite frankly as far as i can see you know don't work or make things worse actually yeah and i think so, um, going, going back to what you said at the start as well i think the other bit of feedback we get is that you know talking about the medicalization of this issue is that you often you're often put into one or two camps you either got psychogenic psychological uh, anxious driven ed or you've got physical issue ed and and then you're separated rather artificially, where actually, as you said earlier on, didn't you, that um, one will always knock in to affect the other. So everyone has a combination of both. And, you know, that the time that we often put into the diary for those first consultation, first consultations allows for the fact that we're understanding and, and trying to explain to people that they will always have a combination of both to some extent. Not yeah. that we are psychologists and we're going to be handling that, mm -hmm. but just the fact that we understand it. Men will say to us, well... You know, that just makes so much sense of course it of course it's affected by me getting anxious and so forth but um there is an underlying physical issue that we're here to treat um and, and on that note john to, to just talk talk to people that are listening to this about how you then move forward from the treatment perspective because you, you touched on at the start about your idea of what shockwave therapy was can you just explain to other other men that are thinking about this what it, what it is like as a treatment Sure. So the first uh, the, the first session we had, Tom um, Tom took out time to explain what shockwave therapy is. He talked about the um, the potential benefits. He talked about the um, the treatment plan, and he and I agreed that we would have initially four sessions. Then we added another two sessions to that by agreement. The first session really was well, so, so. One of the things that Tom mentioned was that there might be. A bit of mild discomfort in the in the process but it really wasn't a big deal at all certainly there was a kind of a feeling of you know of a kind of a sensation of um, receiving treatment but it wasn't painful at all i was aware that you know i was having treatment but there was no there was no kind of pain involved as such and it was relatively quick and i think the first session was about 20 minutes or so tom something like that yeah and also, and I think very importantly, you you did a good job of managing expectations as well. So you did you did say that it's not going to be an immediate thing. It it can take a while, you know, for the beneficial effects actually to come in. And you mentioned, you know, it might be a, a matter of weeks or, or it might be a couple of months or something. In my particular case, I very definitely 
started to see a difference after about six weeks, very definitely. And then I saw a significant improvement after three months, significant improvement. And of course, going back to your point, James, about the psychological aspect of this, of course, as the physical starts to improve, then the anxiety levels start to reduce as well. So that also has a benefit, well, in my imagination anyway, that has a beneficial effect, you know. Yeah. And yeah, Tom, talk to, I mean, in terms of the, me the mechanics of the treatment and using of the shockwave, how do you, because people come with the idea of ele electronic, elect this, that, and the other, how do you explain it to people that are thinking about doing shockwave? How do you explain it to John? I think that, well, part of the process of getting to know people is knowing what their context is, what they do for a job, and then you can tailor the explanation for that. And we try and cherry pick our patients that we're going to do the treatment on based on their response to that, their likely response to that. So if someone's got a very poor general health, overweight, diabetic, smokers, we'll, you mm. know, we'll, we'll try and get them to address those things first so that they're going to get the best effect out of the, out of the treatment. Yeah, sort of, you know, as you were saying, sort of a rather more rounded approach rather than just mm. this is the machine and this is the mechanics of it and the protocol. I often do discuss things like nutrition and you know weight yeah. loss and that sort of stuff with it as well and the fact that some some of the medications can work alongside the treatment as well to try and stimulate blood flow and so forth um so with you with in terms of other people listening in again john would there be any advice that you give to people that are thinking about doing this or how you maybe came to a point in time where you thought yeah i'm going to do this because the other stuff hasn't worked or any anything else that you might want to impart upon people that are thinking about going for something like this as a treatment? Well, I th I'm very aware that there's a stigma involved, you know, in any guys who are kind of suffering, you know, with ED. And if we if we look at the way in which other kind of sociological issues have been addressed over the years, so, um, you know, for same-sex relationships, for example, we're now getting to a point where that's kind of acceptable and people are kind of used to it and they're kind of accepting of it even in, in the with their own family members and i think it feels to me as though this area of um shockwave therapy and um in particular guys talking about ed it feels like we've still got a bit of a cycle to go through before societally we're you know guys are prepared to openly have those conversations yeah but i would say to anybody anybody who currently is detecting a reduction in performance of that type just reach out, just do it, you know, because um, as we know with fear, fear only continues to grab a hold of people until they make the first move and then the fear starts to dissipate. So I would say that anybody that's facing that, uh, you know, reach out and just reach out for help because they'll be pleasantly surprised as to, um, you know, the level of support that's there. That's kind of you to say. And, yeah. and, and like you say, the irony is that 50% of people roughly over the age of 50 will have some element of ed you think that's huge numbers right but yet it still is something when people see our advertising in clinic don't they always like oh you, you treat that oh, wow yeah how many it's, people it's, do you see with that so we've got quite a few people that we see with this because it's so common and they're always surprised at how many people get it over the age of 50 half of people half the, i think that, i think that coyness you know is transmitted in in the patients as well and that they don't rec maybe recognize or want to adopt any sort of strategy to address the initial signs and symptoms of it what what sort of things did you notice initially when you were um that sort of led you on this pathway well the obvious thing was the physical kind of effect of um it was kind of losing erections initially to a minor extent and then it became more of a problem and then then the anxiety kicked in uh and as the as the anxiety kicked in that made the ability to keep and maintain an erection even more difficult, you know, so um, it became um, a growing problem. And I think my initial go to was was to try and well, I I, I did actually see the GP and the GP did actually um, recommend Cialis. Is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> that, that, um, yeah. It's a longer lasting type version of Viagra. Right. OK, so so the doctor put me on that and then, um, you know, that was OK for a while, but didn't really it didn't have any um, repetitive effect, which is when I reached out to you guys. Uh, and, and that's really when the difference came along. And are you are you back to a point that you were at before this started going south? Mm -hmm. you, do you think you has it turned back the clock somewhat? It's well, if I think about where I was, James, when I first reached out to you guys, I would I would say it's 80 percent better than it was right now. Six sessions was that? 
Yes, six sessions in total. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's really good. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm back to where I was when I was 25. <laughs> yeah, when I was really right. You said that. Tom, realistic prognosis. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. Um, and I think you know Tom and I talked about having some follow-up sessions, and I'm fully intending on doing that actually. Right. Um, because you know I've been so um, encouraged by the effect of this that you know i it is it, something that i want to carry on maintaining going forward okay good any other questions from me tom or anything else you want to say to us john no i think we the reason we we uh sort of asked you to get involved in this podcast is actually you're kind of the the classic story really that that's going to sort of encompass the the, the histories that we're going to sort of see isn't he and the yeah. fact that he's rather usefully very erudite on the subject. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It helps. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, I think I think I think that the, the combination of anxiety, the, the acceptance that the anxiety influences the physical mm. and vice versa is such a common story. And the way you described it was absolutely spot mm. on. And um, and that, you know, rather than having that on point medical intervention, which is psychological therapies or physical therapies, you know, what we've learned from doing what we do is that it is that blend of both and we sort of tackle them in our own way although we're not qualified as I say psychologists but uh, it's an acceptance that that's a part of the process just the listening and understanding of it as you say is helpful the fact that we sort of we get we get on the same page about that sort of stuff well it's good work you guys are doing I mean I, I'm and you know I think for you know it's the as you can see you know for me it's been transformational in my life really mm-hmm. and i think um to the extent i've become an ad i've become a real advocate really of uh you know of um of tom. <laughs> uh, well tom, tom yeah tom as well <laughs> tom does a great job but i think i've become i mean i've become a real advocate in amongst my family friends wider sort of community um you know, to, <laughs> to the extent where on a, I can find myself in a pub having a chat to somebody, you know, and you kind of get to know them. And then um, you get onto the more intimate kind of subjects in, in chatting. And I'm saying, you know, how are things in, in the in the basement department? You know, <laughs> because I just want to know if, you know, if guys my age are struggling and let's face it, you know, um, statistically, there's going to be a good number who are. Yeah, yeah. Then why not say to them, look, it's okay, you know, chat about it, it's fine. Go and, you know, reach out, go and see these guys, you know. Good for you, John. <clears throat> um, so I think we'll um, we'll wrap it up there. And yeah. hey, thanks very much for joining us. It's really kind of you to do this for us. And um, and uh, we might see you again when you want to come up and have a top up, yeah? Uh, it won't be too long, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Cheers. Bye for now. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. See you, see you soon. John. Take care.